So we all know that Spider-Man's a web and wall crawler, but what you guys might not expect is how similar his powers are to the almighty duct tape. So in this video, we're gonna cover a few things. First, we're gonna take a look at the science behind how Spider-Man sticks to walls. We call that dry adhesion. Then we're gonna look at how other insects like ants stick to walls, which is wet adhesion. Then we're gonna talk about why size matters when you're talking about sticky stuff. And finally, we're gonna wrap it up with applications and how we use this science in modern day life. All right, so let's start talking about our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I bet you guys thought that his powers were totally unrealistic, right? Well, you are wrong, kind of. So walking on the wall for a spider is just as easy as walking on the ground. The reason for this is a force called Van der Waals. Now Van der Waals works if you have two atoms and one atom's electron cloud points in the other way of the atom right next to it. And so they become oppositely charged diodes that attract one another. This force is temporary, but if you have enough atoms doing it at the same time, you can get some real results when it comes to sticky forces. So for spiders to use Van der Waals forces, they have a lot of hair on their legs. They need as much hair as possible so those hair atoms can then interact with the wall atoms, creating that momentary attraction. So these hairs are really densely packed and they're really soft so that when the spider presses against the wall, the hairs deform a little bit, giving the spider more surface area to use the attraction force on. And so that is how the spider begins to stick to the wall. And guys, don't forget that if you have a bigger surface area, you will stick better because you're having the same force being applied on a larger area. Surface energies play a huge role. So materials with really high surface energies are much more willing to interact with these small hairs and cause a much stronger attractive force than let's say surfaces with very low energies. So if we take Teflon, which is a really low energy level, then it is actually really slippery for our friend the gecko. Now that we know how things stick, let's talk about something that nobody else talks about, which is how these animals can unstick themselves. Because it's really cool how Spider-Man can climb up to the 20th floor of some building and enjoy a pleasant sunset, but he doesn't stay there for the rest of his life. So the way that they unstick is actually pretty clever. All right, so animals like the spider and the gecko, they stick to the wall using their hairs but they also unstick by using their hairs. Spiders and geckos both vary the angle at which the hair hits the wall. And so if the hair touches the wall at a 90 degree angle relative to its foot, then it'll have the weakest force possible and it'll unstick. But if they wanna stick really tightly, they would adjust the angle of the hair to be as acute as possible, flattening it against the wall and giving it much more surface area than if it would have had if it were just 90 degrees on the wall. So as you guys might have thought, um, these hairs are really flexible. And that's actually the same reason for why the spiders don't stick to their own webs. Because spiders basically tiptoe along the parts of the web that are really sticky to them. And because their hairs are at 90 degrees, remember they're tiptoeing, the uh, Van der Waals force is the weakest at that point, And so they're allowed to walk. Oh, and by the way, uh, these forces are called adhesive forces. And so if you have something in between the hair and the wall, let's say water, it actually makes the forest a lot weaker, which is why geckos can't really climb when the surface is wet. So even though geckos are having trouble climbing walls with their wetted toe pads, other animals have no problem climbing when they're wet. Because remember guys, things don't all stick the same way. There are a bunch of animals, specifically ants and beetles, that rely on liquids to help them stick even better. This is called the wet adhesion. So let's just take a wet paper towel and put it against glass. It sticks, but it doesn't stick to that small hairs. It sticks because the water is polar and it's able to attract other materials to it because of hydrogen bonding. So a similar phenomenon happens with insect adhesion. When an insect makes contact with a surface that it wants to climb, it begins to create this really sticky substance from its pores that creates an extremely attractive and sticky force between the insect and the wall that it wants to climb. And this allows the insect to climb any wall that is needed. So even though it basically uses its sweat to climb, it still needs to be really careful because if it secretes too much 
and the thin film between it and the wall becomes very big, it would actually weaken the force that holds the insect to the wall. And so the glue needs to be just thin enough, but not thicker because then the insect won't climb successfully. So insects utilize wet adhesion in different ways just because of how they evolved. Ants and cockroaches, they had just have smooth pads that allows them to secrete the sticky substance and just climb up the walls. They're boring. But other insects like beetles and flies, they actually also have hair on those smooth pads. And so when they secrete the sticky substance, they have the hair that allows them to have more surface area. And thus, the sticky force is stronger because of that added surface area. By the way, uh, tree frogs and possums use wet adhesion too, and possums just use their sweat to climb things. Have fun sleeping knowing that. All right, so now that we're talking about how things stick, how they unstick, and the various methods of how to stick, we wanna talk about size, because size is an actually really important uh, part of why things stick and why some things don't stick. And with size, what's important is a surface area to volume ratio. Insects naturally have way more surface area compared to their volume than, let's say, us humans do. And so because they have way more real estate on their skin compared to the size that their body takes up, uh, it's actually much easier for them to use hairs to stick to the wall. Think of it this way. The more area you take up, the more area you're going to need to use up on the wall. And so it's much easier for insects to use a hair to stick to walls because they naturally need less of that area of wall to stick to that surface. So if I want to be Spider-Man and climb a glass wall, I'll need way more sticky pads than let's say an ant does just because my volume is so much bigger. All right, so we are finally done with Spider-Man and now we can move on to our applications how we use forces like van der Waals in our everyday lives. So before we start talking about how I can become Spider-Man, let's talk about something that is way more applicable to your lives, duct tape. So duct tape works in almost the exact same way that a spider climbs a wall, but it has one more component to it that we need to take a look at, and that's wetting. So wetting basically means how well a liquid can spread out on a surface. The higher the energy of that surface, the better the liquid spreads out. And so we want that liquid in the glue of the duct tape to spread out, helping spread out the glue uniformly in all directions. And then after that, we apply force to duct tape, making the glue go as close to the surface as possible. And after that, we let Van Walls take over between the glue and the material itself. And that's how we get a sticky attraction. Oh, and by the way, the reason why tape doesn't stick to itself when it's rolled up is because the surface of the tape is actually uh, coated with a release coating, which prevents the tape from sticking to itself. All right, so now we can kind of see the reason why Spider-Man and duct tape are really similar. The answer is Van der Waals forces. But can we become Spider-Man? Can I become Spider-Man? Can I just wrap duct tape around my hands and just go scaling a wall in tights? It's not that simple. Remember guys, we already talked about how size plays a factor in all of this. So if I were to go and wrap myself in duct tape, because of the surface area to volume ratio, I'd need over 40% of my body to be wrapped in duct tape, which sucks. But thankfully there is another way for us to become Spider-Man. And the answer is not found in spiders, but actually in geckos. So uh, researchers have recently developed a tape called gecko tape that uses the uh, anatomy of the gecko pad to create the sticky forces in the tape. And the reason why geckos are so, so, so fascinating to us is because they are the largest sticking creatures in nature. They have the lowest surface area to volume ratio and that makes it so much more applicable to us. In fact, because of it, it's actually allowed to withstand loads in a small area and keep this 40 gram Spider-Man glued to the glass ceiling with just the palm of its tiny hand. On that hand, it's gecko tape. So like, if we were to do this, like would, would we be called gecko man instead? Do we need to give geckos the credit here, guys? Do we? By the way, not only is it really strong, but it's also reusable 
and self-cleaning. But guys, what kind of video would this be if we didn't talk about military technology, right? So Stanford and DARPA actually made a climbing gear that is inspired by the heisenness power of the gecko. They were able to make gloves or paddles made of wedges that copy the gecko's pads down through a microscopic scale and even emulate the way it attaches and detaches using a spring-loaded mechanism which reverts the micro wedges into upright position 90 degrees to reduce the attractive force. And remember we talked about earlier in the video how spiders use the angle of their hair to adjust the attractive force the same way. Man, I really hope that gecko tape hits my Walmart real soon. But on a more serious note, with so much innovation happening in climbing technology and synthetic spider silk, which is a video for another time, it won't be long before somebody actually dons the red and blue tights and goes climbing Manhattan's best skyscrapers. In fact, it might be me. But when that day comes, we won't have a radioactive spider to thank or an insurance lizard, but a Dutch physicist by the name of Johannes Diederik van der Waals. Thanks for watching.